Hey there friends, real quick, this is Jim Morrell trying not to confuse you yet again. You are about to watch my large family freezer cooking video that I did in June 2017, right before I had baby Benjamin. So here I am with the baby, and you're going to watch you, and I'm very pregnant with the baby. So what happened, as I've mentioned to you guys before, is I filmed this vlog before I had Benjamin, and I just couldn't get it up till now. So it's about, uh, it's, pro it's probably seven or eight weeks since I filmed this vlog and we are just now running out of the meals that I made during this freezer cooking session. So hope you enjoy it and here we go. Let's go freezer cooking when I'm uh, super, super pregnant about to have a baby. Friends, so I am back with another two days of large family style freezer cooking. I'm going to just go ahead and jump into sharing my whiteboard with you letting you know what I've been slowly working on today, what my plan is for tomorrow, and uh, how we're gonna pull this off and make it happen. So, to, to the whiteboard, right? All right, so this is my master plan. Okay, so I have it divided into phase one, phase two, or we could say day one, day two. So for today, my goal is to bulk cook, so to get all the chicken and the hamburger cooked. I have about 25 pounds of each. We also have a, can a ham, and we have four kielbasas. I want to get all of those chopped into small little bites. I want to get all the rice cooked, which I've already done that. I want to get the noodles cooked, and I want to get, hopefully, we'll see how this goes, uh, at least 10 loaves of banana bread and 10 loaves of blueberry bread. And if I only got half and half done, I'll just scooch the rest onto the next day. Then tomorrow is when a whole lot of assembly goes down. Also, and I'll go back over those in a minute. Also, I have a list of things um, that the kids, and when I say kids, I mainly mean my oldest daughter, Naomi, who's almost 11, and then Zion, who's almost 14, and Jaden, who's almost 17. So um, they're going to scramble eggs. They're gonna do at least 140, hopefully, peanut butter and jellies for the freezer, 140 cheese sandwiches for the freezer. We use those to make grilled cheese for lunches, seven loaves of French toast, a whole lot of pancakes, and they're gonna help me assemble egg, ham, and cheese breakfast burritos. So they don't really help so much, at least I usually have them doing other things, like these items, they don't usually help with the dinner assembly as much. I usually have them working on this, these items. And then this is just a list of things I need my husband to go into Walmart by himself and pick up in just a few minutes. Um, anyway, so the meals that I'm doing, and I have a little reminder, you know, we're going to freeze any extra hamburger and chicken. The meals that we're doing this go round is um, we're going to do stuffed shell, we're going to do stuffed shells bake. We're gonna do chicken fried rice. We're gonna do baked mac and cheese. And I'm thinking I'd like to either add, add some kind of protein, either beef, ham, or kielbasa. I'll see when I get to it which one I have the most of. <laughs> and then we're gonna do a cheesy kielbasa noodle bake. I'm gonna do slow cooker chicken and dumplings. I'm gonna do taco casserole, ham, cheese, and potato bake. I'm gonna do tater tot casseroles. I'm thinking I'm gonna also get in some easy baked stroganoff, four or so of an egg, ham, and cheese breakfast casserole. And so this gives us well over 40 dinner meals. It's gonna give us about 40 breakfast or so. I'm doing my math here. Usually I like to think that French toast, that should be seven breakfasts. The pancake should be at least seven. The egg, ham, and cheese burritos, they, we usually go through 10 for a breakfast because we do add in either yogurt or fruit or something. So that's another 10. So if we say 15 plus 10, that's 25. And then even if I add in my egg, ham, and cheese breakfast bake, so I might be off. I might have meant 30-ish there. Um, so it's all a rough estimate. I just try to make a whole lot. I remembered what I was doing. I was figuring in these banana breads and blueberry breads to go along to mix in with some breakfast too. Now with my freezer cooking this month, I'll turn the camera so you can see me. With my freezer cooking, um, 
I have many, many freezer meals still left from our last freezer cooking days that I did about four or five weeks ago now. So next I'm going to take you up to my freezer and just kind of show you what I'm starting with. We probably have, I'm going to say offhand, we have at least 10 of the 9 by 13 pans. Um, I think I have three or four slow cooker meatloafs. The things we're out of are a lot of the fill-in things like the peanut butter and jellies and the grilled cheese and the fruit breads. I think we have one pack of French toast left. I think we're out of the egg and cheese burritos. So um, anyway, we have a baby coming. There's the baby. <laughs> we have a baby coming in, uh, as of this filming, of four to five more weeks. So just trying to get ahead of things. These, the grocery haul that I just did and this freezer cooking time, plus with the meals I have, I'm thinking in my head that should be a good six weeks or so. Obviously, we're gonna add in some other meals within that. There's gonna be times when we're not home, we eat dinner out, there's, and there's gonna be times where I just feel like making something different. We might get down to where we do like a week or so pantry challenge. Um, I'm planning that this will be my last big freezer cooking time before we have the baby but I might be able to get another one in. So, so yeah, that's the plan, man. Okay, so here's how my new full-size freezer is looking right now. These items, the mixed veggies and the uh, blueberries we're gonna take back in for cooking I'm doing today. We have you know, nothing left on several shelves. All of the freezer PB&Js, which ended up being about 10 or so lunches really for the month, are gone. We do have a few of these freezer grilled cheeses left. You all have, a few of you have asked me how to do these. I just hook up the griddle and put the frozen <laughs> grilled cheese right on it and flip it and voila, we have grilled cheese. We also, we also have two packs, it looks like, of French toast left. So that gives us a base. Um, here in the door, now several of these like potatoes and tater tots I'm using in some meals this month. Got a pack of popsicles left, some hot dog buns, uh, some rice, and some little veggie packs too. Now up here, this is everything that's left from my freezer cooking time last month. 15 meals left. So I've got 11 of my big pans of meals, and then I have three freezer meatloafs, and then I have a pot pie casserole that's still left. So that's 15, and then I'm gonna get this puppy filled up again, and have some peace of mind. Yeehaw. One thing I've gotten done already is I got all four boxes of my jumbo shells cooked for the stuffed shells I'm going to make. I also just finished with about six pounds of boneless, skinless chicken breast. One of the meals I'm going to get done today is because we need dinner anyway, um, and it sounds good to my pregnant belly, is I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get all the chicken fried rice done. And, and we'll have that for dinner, and then I'll get those freezer meals done and out in the freezer. I'm also in the middle of juggling that. I'm gonna work on getting the banana bread going first and keep my little bread assembly line going. It's, it's 5.35, so don't think I'm doing this at 5.35 in the morning. I probably started today about two, but it has been very slow and steady. I did get all the rice done. Um, I'm just kind of picking away at it. What I realized, and I had showed on the list here, there were still some things I needed in order for the um, the bigger kids to help me today. Like we needed a block of cheese, and we needed four jars of peanut butter, those kind of things. I also want my husband to just pick us up a second electric griddle. We have one, I love it, but I would love to. It's gonna be able to help us get a lot more done um, on these big cooking days. So my husband's gonna go to Walmart for me this evening and him and the kids have been doing a ton of outside wilderness projects today. They got a bridge built and they're moving rocks and digging stumps and doing stuff. So, so tomorrow I'll have more kids available uh, just to, to help push some of this out. So like I said, my goals are if I can get the meat done, if I can get oh, the rice is already done, get the rest of the noodles done, get this bread going, then tomorrow will be big meal assembly time. I'm going to show you how the chicken stir fry is going because again it's what my baby wanted for dinner tonight and so I'm going to try to make several pans of it too. So this is some chicken that I cooked up separate so I could do it in soy sauce. There's a whole onion in there. 
This is one of the large bags of mixed vegetables, also with some soy sauce. And then I'm scrambling some eggs right now. I put the brown, all the brown rice that I've pre-cooked today, I have in my large, large, wonderful, beautiful, intelligent, smart, all the lovely things I can say about my large stock pot. So my plan is I'm going to dump the other ingredients in here and mix it all up. I will put it in nine by 13 baking pans for the freezer. And my goal, of course, is to have a big bowl of it for tonight as well. Okay, so stirring this will be a beast, but I have my huge pot now loaded. I've added the five pounds of chicken that I cooked in soy sauce, 18 scrambled eggs, and that huge pack of mixed vegetables that I cooked in soy sauce, and then I added in a little bit of sesame seed oil as well. So now I'm gonna work on mixing this whole thing together. Here's a peek at how the fried rice looks when it is all stirred up. I did end up taking about half of it out after mixing for a few minutes. Then I made sure the bottom layer was mixed and I've mixed it all together. So lots of mixing for the arm muscles, but now I'm going to take out enough for dinner tonight and then see how many more pans I can fill. Here is three large pans of the chicken fried rice. I have saved the equivalent. I scooped out the equivalent. Uh, it's uh, my large Tupperware container. I scooped out enough for us to have it for dinner tonight and tomorrow night, so that would equal about five pans worth. But I know tomorrow I don't want to stop to make dinner, so at least we got three more for the freezer out of it and the rest for dinner for two nights. So I am on day two of mega freezer cooking. I was going to update you on what I got done yesterday. It wasn't quite as much as I would have liked to have gotten done. I worked pretty steady from about 5 p.m. until midnight. That's just how it worked out in my world. And um, anyway, so I'm going to show you my list and go over what we did get done. So I did get about 50 pounds of the meat pre-cooked. I got 10 pounds of rice total cooked and 10 pounds of various noodles. I did not get to either of the breads, but I did scramble the eggs. I did, let me think here, I think I did about six dozen or so. And then uh, I saved the broth from my chicken for different things. And I think that's it. I think that's really all I got done, but I'm moving in slow motion. so. Right now, I've got um, Jaden is going through and doing the grilled cheese sandwiches. Naomi's working on peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Zion helped me get some dishes hand washed and caught up this morning. He also helped me with that last night. So everyone has been super helpful. Right now, Zion is cutting up kielbasa, and then I'm going to have him cut up a ham. Um, so when Jaden's done with grilled cheese sandwiches, and he has to go to work this afternoon, but if he still has time, I'm gonna have him man the French toast. My husband did pick me up a second electric griddle last night to help that go a little quicker. And when Naomi is done with PB&Js this afternoon, I'm gonna have her work on pancakes. So that's kind of what the bigger kids are doing right now. Right now, what I'm working on, and Amelia's been over there helping me, is we're getting a whole bunch of banana bread going. Amelia and I have been also working on mashing up all our bananas. We have about 15 cups of bananas in here, so I have tripled my standard recipe. And what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to mix it all in my massive stock pot. Uh, but I'm going to do what I can with the hand mixer in this bowl, which is the largest mixing bowl that I have. Now, it's been a little bit because I I had to sit and drink a cup of coffee. Hadn't had any coffee yet today. It's like 1.30 in the afternoon. Um, had to drink a cup of coffee, get off my feet for about 30 minutes or so, let Daniel and Amelia play on the deck. Anyway, um, Zion used his good arm muscles to stir this batch of banana bread up for me. So here we go. Now I'm gonna get it into several pans in the oven. Got five pans going in now. Two of these are nine by 13 pans. This is an eight by 11. This is an eight by eight. So I'm gonna get all these in the oven now and I have enough, I believe, to get about five more pans after this load. 
Okay, so here's how things are looking with the kielbasa and cheesy broccoli bake. I have made, and then I have another 9 by 13 pan, so I've made six total. That's currently in the oven because we have a guest for dinner. So we're going to have our little bit of stir fry that's left over from last night, and then we're going to have one of these pans as well. And, uh, you know, just as two separate dishes, but it'll go, go together lovely like a buffet. So I'm going to wrap these up now and get these labeled and in the freezer for weeks to come. So this is how the kielbasa and cheesy broccoli bake turned out. I did it in my oven, and of course this wasn't already pre-frozen. I, I did it covered with foil at 350 for about 45 minutes, and then I took the foil off the last 10 to 15 minutes, and it, it's perfect now. I had one bite. I'm waiting for the second bite to cool, and we're going to add this into our dinner buffet. And then here's how the banana bread is working out. I ended up having nine loaves that I'm going to put in the freezer now and then we'll add more later. So this is how the first pan is looking. It's got a layer of sauce underneath. It has all these stuffed shells here. I did a loose cup of shredded mozzarella on top. Now I'm gonna cover it with sauce and more cheese and then wrap it. And then we'll just see how many pans of these we can make. So giving you guys an update, it is now day three. So yesterday, what happened? I ended up taking a really long, like three or so hour nap in the late afternoon, early evening. So of course that took time. I also ended up with a sick kiddo and that took time. So I'm gonna update you on what I did get done yesterday and then where we are today. And I'm out of breath because <gasps> I just took Gabriel, Liam, and Amelia out to be with their daddy while we finished this up. So let me show you. What's been happening here? Gonna get my marker. So, okay, so yesterday I did finish up the stuffed shells. I also did the cheesy kielbasa noodle bake. And I did the ham and cheese potatoes bake. Yeah. Now, okay, we finished the banana bread. Um, I'm looking through here. So right now, Jaden is working on seven loaves of French toast. Yeah. And Woo, Daniel! Daniel's having fun. And then yeah. Zion is assembling the egg, ham, and cheese burritos. So I mentioned yesterday I didn't feel like standing to do the cheese sauce for the baked, uh, for what was it? For one of my recipes, for the uh, kielbasa and broccoli bake. You having fun, Daniel? You got a box? And our floor is super cruddy, but we're not mopping, obviously, till we're done with all this cooking. So, oh, and then Travis, uh, I had him pick, pick us up a second griddle because now, like when Jaden does the French toast, he can do almost a whole loaf at a time. I figured it would just be a time saver that we deserve. Um, okay, so what I'm gonna go after doing now is I'm gonna do the tater tot casserole. I'm gonna do beef stroganoff, but I think I'm using rice. And you'll see, this is like the super cheap uh, mama don't wanna think version. And then what else? Oh, and I'm gonna do the taco casserole. I'm still up in the air, and I'm gonna see time-wise what I'm doing between, oh, Daniel, you're having fun with that car. Yes, yes. Uh, hey, Daniel, ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Woo, and he's off. Okay, so I'm still up in the air with the baked mac and cheese and the slow cooker chicken and dumplings. We have, our dance recitals coming up. We've got dance class and stuff this afternoon and I'm just gonna see how far I can push it and uh, what else I can get done to pull this off. I had to come out to the garage anyway so I thought I'd give you guys an update. Uh, it's not super organized yet, but and the, Zion helped me a whole lot last night and Jaden helped me a lot too, especially when he got home from work. Busy boys. Um, they've been carrying different uh, casserole pans out here for me. But here is all the frozen grilled cheese we got done. And again, I, I just know I'll be asked again, so let me tell you real quick. It's just two slices of bread, two pieces of cheese, frozen, not grilled, and then we throw it on the griddle when we need it. Fantastic in a pinch. Down here is our bazillion uh, peanut butter and jellies. Those are our stuffed shells. Now those, you know, they're a little soft. Anything that's, you know, goopy or cheesy, not very firm. Um, I have the boys, I had the boys set them out individually so they could get hard, but now today I can stack them. 
So this is a collection of pre-cooked items I've done over the last few days that uh, we're gonna use now. And then I still got a little bit of this fantastic chicken fried rice. I'm going to shove this in my face <laughs> while I work on making other meals. Okay, so giving you guys a peek at what I'm working with. Now I cooked my ground beef. I pre-cooked it two days ago, if you guys remember. And so, you know, it just gets hard when it's sitting in the bag. So there's the ground beef. I went ahead and put in here four cans of diced tomatoes, four cans of black beans. I only had the equivalent of what I would call a standard can of corn. I would put in four cans of corn though if I had it, but I don't, so that's that. I'm gonna add in my garlic powder, my onion powder, cumin, and also chili powder to make a, a quick homemade taco seasoning flavor. And we're just gonna get all this mixed up. Oh, I also added in a whole onion. So, could have done this on my prep day. It's okay though, I'm just warming it up, stirring it up, and then we're gonna do our layers. And then, so I've got the ground beef and the veggies and the rice all mixed up. I just added in four cups of shredded cheese that I'm gonna mix in and then we'll start making, putting our pans together. My oldest son has to go get ready for work real quick. So, I'm taking over. Um, He's, at least for now, he's gotten, I think, about four loaves done of French toast. And so I'm going to jump in and get some more going. And then I'm going to get back over there and work on assembling those taco casseroles. And I may hand this job off to Naomi, possibly. Zion is still working on burritos. And Naomi's doing something else right now. So we'll just see how it goes. I'm going to show you what this looks like real quick. Okay, so there you go. The dueling griddles are going. Jaden said obviously the new one heats up a lot quicker and, uh, you know, cooks things faster. This one we've had, I don't know, maybe I bought it two years ago. Maybe it's been three years ago now. I shared it on Instagram a bazillion years ago. So I'm going to go over here and work on, I was working on putting these taco casseroles together. I'm going to do the first one and then I'll show you how I assemble them. That's what our first taco casserole looks like all done. What I'm going to do now is we actually need something for dinner tonight anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and put this in our oven so it doesn't need to be defrosted or anything. I'm going to do it for about 30 to 45 minutes on 350. So these I let sit too long, so these probably need to come off first. See, this is me trying to cook too many things at one time. We'll get back to those casseroles, though, in a minute. I just have them on there to cool for a few minutes. Come on, buddy, be my friend. Get on my spatula. Go. Come on, come on, you can do it. You can do it. Hop on. It's fun. It's fun to ride on the spatula French toast pieces. Now, come on, I'm gonna just use my fingers. Okay. There we go. We will just not play with the spatula. Obviously, be careful if you grab your hot food. I am not using proper utensils. Do not try this at home. This is desperate mama trying to get this freezer cooking done. Those actually are a little too hot for me. Okay, so what the way I like to do these is to take taco shells, crunch them up. You do a layer of taco shells and then your other layers. However, this is the only box of taco shells that I have, but have no fear. I can still make this, and it's still gonna be fantastic. There's another one completed. We got another one in the oven. So let me show you what I'm using. My friend Jo, and now her site, she's over at lastingthumbprints.com, and she's one of my best girlfriends in real life too. Um, she makes like some really good Mexican lasagnas, and she uses tortillas. So of course, I emergency messaged her and asked her, I said, I'm out of chips. Do you think I could use tortillas in my taco casserole? And she said, oh yeah, I do it all the time. So that's what I'm doing. And what I've done is I've just sliced, sliced them in half, and then it's not gonna be you know, a total covering, but it's good enough, just enough to get a base there. Next, I do my, now this is my ground beef and cheese and beans and corn and diced tomatoes and rice and seasoning. Now, I know I did my little variation of homemade taco seasoning. If you're a mama in a pinch or you just don't care to do that, whatever, you uh, just use regular taco seasoning packets from the store. It's totally fine. Whatever, you know our motto around here, you do you. You do whatever works for you. So, I'm spreading this out. Okay, now, next, what I do, it ends up being about a cup of sour cream. 
you know, I do eyeballing school around here, but I like to do the little, I like to do little dollops, little drops of sour cream all around, and then spread it out. Yay, yay. And Naomi is over there. She has taken over the French toast making job. Jaden is off to work for the evening. And then we're going to run out the door to dance. My husband is doing the take Jaden to work shift. He would take the kids to dance, but we're getting ready, like I had mentioned earlier, for end of year recitals and stuff. So I'm going to take them tonight because I need to talk to one of their teachers. Okay, so there's our sour cream layer. And now, this is another thing I do. I'm going to tell you cups. I have I've measured it and checked it. One of my handfuls of cheese or anything equals a cup. So there's one cup of cheese, two cups of cheese, voila. Now, also with these taco casserole bakes, you can do a lot of variations. I mean, if your family loves black olives, you could do a layer of black olives, a layer of jalapenos, so many fun things you can do. And if I was using taco shells, I would do another crunched up layer here. But again, we make the best with what we have. So now I'm going to do some tortillas placed around. Okay, and then here I like to get in one more thin layer of our mixture here. I hear my ice maker going. Okay. I may have to get one more little scoop out. But I want to leave enough room because I'm going to do one more layer of the sour cream and the cheese. And then on baking day, when we take these out of the freezer, and then I can either put them in frozen, of course the cooking time is going to be adjusted because that will be longer, or we can set them out in the refrigerator the night before and they'll be defrosted by the time they need to be put in for dinner the next afternoon. So what I'll do is whenever these need to be put in before dinner, or one of the kids can, I will need to pick up more taco shells. Or this is also a great way if you find like stale boxes of taco shell shells on sale. Sometimes you can find, especially at like discount grocery stores like Sharp Shopper, or you can find bags of tortilla chips that need used up. So I just crunch up a layer on top and then shove them in the oven. With my bake that I'm doing now, I didn't get to it in time because French toast drama, all of that. So about 15 minutes before it's done, I'm gonna crunch up my taco shells over there. So, let's get another layer of sour cream. And this recipe is fun because just depending on, you know, how you feel for the day, if I was doing this one night, I could serve it with uh, shredded lettuce and tomatoes and other toppings similar to tacos. Also, you could do more full chips, lots of ways you can do it to just really stretch this recipe out further. And and this goes great with lots of good fresh veggies. I know when I'm filming this, we're in the gardening time of year and lots of you have your gardens going. So again, lots of ways you can make this work and make this a nice full meal for your family. So that layer of sour cream is a little thinner. And then we'll do our two cups of cheese here. There's another one. And two. Okay, and I'm actually going to do three because I feel like the top needs a little bit more. And I'm going to push this out of the way and see, just see how many we can stretch our meat mixture to do. This is what our taco casseroles look like done. Now I just realized, and of course time is ticking away and it's almost time for dance. Um, oh, and let me show you. I've got just a little bit of the meat and rice mixture left. I'm going to put that in a baggie and just label it. I can use that later when I do, like if I do taco meat in the slow cooker or if I do a big pot of chili. I'll just add that in because it's already perfect to go along. Um, but anyway, I still have the stroganoff to do, and I have tater tot casserole, and then I have another recipe I can't think of right now. All need sour cream, and I used a ton of sour cream on these. I'm totally out. So I will have to get 
sour cream tonight. We're gonna have to finish those couple recipes up tomorrow. I think I can, I might be able to pull off getting one more super easy chicken recipe done before I have to run out the door. So I'm gonna get these wrapped up and work on, here's a of the, uh, the kitchen, some kitchen messes going on. Work on getting some of this cleaned up See if I can get my one more thing done. May not. We'll see. We'll see how it goes here. Here is my bag of the just the leftover meat and rice because I'm not going to do any more of these today. So I just put a little note to myself, add to taco meat or chili and the date. And here in the next month or two, I'm sure I will set this out and add it to something. And so here is what one of the taco bakes looked like. I did about five crushed tacos on the top and one more handful of cheese, lots of cheese in this one. And here is a picture of it in action. I'm gonna cool some plates off for a quick running out the door dinner. Friends, so we're back to day four of me getting a bunch of freezer meals done. If you remember yesterday, I got five of those taco casserole bakes done. We had one for dinner. Those are really, really good. Uh, then I ran out of sour cream. Those took a lot of sour cream, more than, just more than I figured. I had bought several of, um, let me show you, like these big three pound tub containers, but just with several of the recipes I've already done, you know, I, I underestimated on the sour cream. So Travis went back last night and uh, got me more sour cream. And what else did he get me? I think that was it. Um, so today I can finish. What's been happening so far today is Zion's working on the blueberry bread. There's three loaves in. He's got two, I'll show you, two of these nine by 13 pans ready to go. I have brown rice I just did in the Instant Pot. I needed this for the stroganoff I'm gonna do. And there is the brown rice. Anyway, so that's one kitchen scene going down right now. And then, um, again, about to have this baby. So my older kids, super, super helpful. Travis just took a bunch of the littles out to do some errands with him. And our older son has a retreat he's going on. He needed an air mattress, so they're picking up an air mattress too. So this is a lot of the items I need for several different meals that I'm going to jump into doing. I still have some pre-cooked ground beef in the refrigerator and then that rice over there. But this is the crux of it. So from what we've done over the last few days, I've got these big bags of chicken. I think I have another big bag. Oh, yep, there it is. So I just set this all out before I start my mega meal assembly. This is the cheese I have left, those pre-cooked noodles, sour cream. I got some mixed vegetables. So I'll get organized and put these with my broccoli. Okay, I got interrupted. I don't know what I was saying and I won't know until I was editing. But uh, I think I was telling you guys that this is what I'm gonna work with now besides my ground beef and rice and we're gonna go from there. I've got, oh, that's what, let me show you the meals I'm gonna do. And this blueberry bread is beeping. Okay, so for our meal recap, um, I scratched doing, what was it? I'm not doing baked macaroni and cheese. I replaced that with a chicken broccoli Alfredo bake that we're gonna do. And what else? Oh, and at this point, I'm not going to do the slow cooker chicken and dumplings. I can, I will link in my post that goes through all of this, that has all the recipes and all the resources for you to pull this off uh, without having to mark up a whiteboard like me. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to try to do several of these chicken broccoli Alfredo bakes. I'm going to do several tater tot chicken casseroles and I'm going to do several of these baked stroganoff easy casseroles and then I'm going to do several of these egg bacon and cheese bakes which really can be good for breakfast or dinner or whenever. So I'm thinking that should put us when it's all said and done around 40 freezer meals that have been done and hopefully we can get at least those 10 loaves of blueberry bread done and that's our goal for today and I will wrap this freezer cooking time up. Here is the inside of the tater tot chicken casserole that I'm working on. You can certainly do this the variation where you use several pounds of ground beef and you use cream of mushroom soup. I am doing it with chicken because I have more chicken left and the little bit of ground beef I do have left I need for the stroganoff. So what I've done is I've used three 26 ounce cans of cream of chicken soup. Again, you can certainly make it homemade if you need total grace, buy the cream of chicken in a can. I used four cups of 
sour cream, four cups of shredded cheese, and then a big five pound bag of mixed veggies. And really to mix this up well, I had to use my hands, but they have since been rinsed off. So now we're gonna fill our casserole dishes, then layer the top with tater tots, and then some more shredded cheese and it'll be done. Two of them done here, and I'm gonna show you guys the super easy assembly process for this third one. Obviously, the first thing I'm gonna do is go to my big pot of mix. Now, this recipe, I feel like, you know, if you're on a really tight budget and you need to stretch this more, you can add in pre-cooked rice or even some pre-cooked noodles. Uh, you could stretch it a couple different ways. I have used the chicken, the cream of chicken, the sour cream, and the veggies. But if you would like to stretch it a little further than the four pans I'm doing, I think that rice would go in your main mix that you put down first and no one would really know. I just always think of ways that moms can stretch their meals a little further if they need to. Okay, there you go. So this is what the mix looks like in the pan. Now it's as simple as getting the bag of taters and lining the top. I'm gonna set my camera down now and pour some on here and then I'll show you guys in a second. Okay, that, that was a little quicker for me. And then I spread them out so they're not stacked on top of each other because you want these to be nice and crispy whenever you cook it. And the nice thing is, since I'm doing about five more meals today, we'll just see whichever one looks most appealing for dinner tonight and that is what we will put in the oven. Okay. No, Jamarel math is two of my handfuls. There we go. So that's the assembly process for this chicken tater tot casserole. And again, you can switch it out and use ground beef, but I, we're working with what we have here. Okay, so Zion is rinsing my pot for me, but here is what the four chicken tater tot casseroles look like completely done. So now I'm gonna wrap them and we'll get these in the freezer. So now what's going down is my chicken broccoli Alfredo noodle bake. I have five pounds of shredded chicken, so this is gonna be massive. Um, of course, these graham crackers here have nothing to do with anything other than I just ate a whole bunch of them with peanut butter, yay! I'm gonna use four cans of cream of mushroom soup, about six cups of sour cream and cheese and broccoli and these noodles, so let's put it all together. Okay, so I just poured in the four cans of cream of mushroom. Now I'm gonna do the cups of sour cream. So here's a peek at the, what it looks like with the sour cream in there. And there we are with five cups of shredded cheese. Okay, so here's what the pot looks like so far. I just poured in the five pounds of frozen broccoli. This is what the big, my massive pot looks like. The five pounds of chicken is at the bottom, so I'm just gonna have to use my hands again to stir this. And then I'm gonna use the smaller container to bring in some of the mixture and then the noodles and actually you know, mix up the casserole filling and do it between two. You know if you're a mama and you cook a whole lot, uh, it doesn't always fit into one pot, so I have to use several sometimes. Here is how the chicken broccoli Alfredo bakes have turned out. I was actually able to get seven casserole pans full. Now all of these are nine by 13, except this one is a nine by, I think it's like 11 and three quarters, but it's a deeper dish. So I'm going to say for that little speck of a measurement, the volume is the same. So now, of course, Zion's rinsing a pot for me again. I'm going to cover all of these in cheese and with cheese and I'll give you the final peak. Go topped with cheese. I just remembered I do have probably about, I don't know, maybe a pound of shredded mozzarella left. That would have been perfect on top of this too, but cheese is cheese and this blend will be excellent. I'm going to shake some Parmesan cheese on top of each one and then foil them. And yes, my voice is getting tired, but we're almost done. Hey guys, so here's the update. I, uh, my stomach was hurting and I just had to lay down, you know, muscle aches and pain. So I laid down for a little bit. I've got some bacon in the oven right now for an egg and cheese and bacon bake that I'm gonna do. We're gonna have dinner first. Just got done doing is my easy beef stroganoff. This was just 12 cups of pre-cooked brown rice, about two and a half pounds of beef because I'm running low on that at this point. Four cans of cream of mushroom soup, about six cups 
of sour cream, mixed it all together by hand in my messy pot, spread it out on my dishes, and then I put about two cups of mozzarella on top of each one because this last little bit of shredded cheese I have to use for my egg and bacon bakes that I'm gonna do here last. So, and what we're doing for dinner tonight, again, since mama can't move, is I did one of these tater tot casseroles and I did one of the chicken broccoli alfredos. We won't necessarily eat both, but today is Saturday when I'm filming this, tomorrow's Sunday, and I figured whatever leftovers we could have for lunch tomorrow. We're also having bowls of applesauce with this dinner tonight. Good morning, guys. I am in full pregnant woman, pregnant country woman nightgown mode here, so I'm not showing you myself, but I will show you breakfast. So here's how breakfast is looking. Oh my, those are almost done. These are, I'm gonna do these for the freezer now that I have everything out, and then I'm officially done with my current several day freezer cooking stock up. But what these are is it's eggs, sour cream, shredded cheese, and then it's topped with tater tots, bacon, and more cheese. So just ridiculous. We won't eat both of these for breakfast, but I'm making one for now and one for later. I'm sure we'll have it as leftovers either for tomorrow's breakfast or at some point here real soon. Hey guys, so what I'm doing, I'm hoping to make four 9 by 13 breakfast casseroles. This is four dozen eggs. So if you're just doing this recipe for a smaller amount of people, you could just do a dozen eggs. And the little, you'll see some little mess in the bowl already. I use this bowl. I'm just reusing this bowl. I mixed two casseroles in it earlier. So to do this large family style, I've got four dozen eggs in here. I'm gonna put in four cups of shredded cheese, four cups of sour cream, and we'll go from there. Okay, so our bowl is nearly to the brim, but you know, I like to push things. So we've got in our four cups of shredded cheese underneath the four cups of sour cream. I added in about three cups of milk because I didn't think I could fit any more in and now I'm gonna mix it mostly on low to be able to mix this up. So these are our four nine by 13 pans. They will, of course, you know, the egg mix is gonna grow when I cook it to look like our cooked pans I already showed you. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to wrap these and I'm going to freeze them. Again, this is our egg, our sour cream, our milk, and our cheese mixture. I'm not freezing it with tater tots on it. What I'm gonna do, and, and you know, hello talking hand, we have a shadow today. Um, the way that we'll handle this is the night before we need these bakes, we will set one, you know, me or someone else in our family will set one out in the refrigerator. And then the morning that we bake it, or even if we're gonna have it for dinner, whenever we need it, it'll be defrosted. We will put, we will add our tater tots and some extra cheese on then, and then bake it. It may need up to an hour at 350 in our oven, depending on if, you know, it's truly fully defrosted or not. And your oven times, it's just gonna vary, but you basic, but you cook it until it's hot and bubbly. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna freeze it with the tater tots on it because it's very liquidy. We will just do it that day. So I'm gonna give you guys a freezer tour after all these days of freezer cooking. And this is what the freezer looks like. Tons and tons and tons and tons of meals. Tons, 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 tons. <laughs> Grilled cheese ready to go. Again, not pre-cooked, but ready. Can grab them in a quick hurry. All the peanut butter jellies, breakfast burritos, just many, many pans of things. And then we even overflowed into our other refrigerator freezer. So we have several pans in here. Lots of bread, lots of bread, just some extra veggies up here. And I have four more casserole pans with four breakfast bakes in the house freezer. 